So I wanted to talk today about a lot of the brain retraining programs um, and their opinion on support groups and symptom focused thinking and talking. So a lot of people get a little bit upset or confused when they're doing a brain retraining program and people suggest leaving their support groups, not talking about their symptoms, not researching their symptoms, but there's really good reasons for this. And so we know that the things that we focus on and perseverate on, we are reinforcing those neural pathways in our brain. And so every time we go on a support group and we see someone else with our diagnosis sharing this list of mystery symptoms they're experiencing or flare-ups that they're experiencing, it triggers our brain and it reinforces the part of our brain that's associated with our illness, with our symptoms. And it triggers almost like a cascade of events, just like we know with the limbic system, when that amygdala gets turned on, it does that same thing. And it triggers our hippocampus to say, "Uh uh-oh, we're looking up symptoms again. Does that mean we're sick? Does that mean something's going on? Our body goes in high alert, we dump those neurotransmitters, the adrenaline, the cortisol levels that are already elevated, and it can actually cause us to have um, like psychosomatic symptoms, or not that they're all in our head, but it can trigger the pathways in our brain that release the chemicals in our body that trigger existing symptoms. In addition to that, it creates negative thought patterns that we loop through. So if we're working really hard on our brain retraining and we're used to saying our affirmations of I am healing every day, I am strong, I am empowered, I am following my plan, I'm not in danger, limbic system calm down, we might be saying those as part of our rounds, but then every time we jump on that Facebook support group or we chat with a friend that has symptoms, we're reinforcing symptom-focused thinking. And so it kind of undoes the work that we're working so hard on. And a big trouble I see people having is they they have friends from these groups, you know, so, um, or they have friends that they've kind of come up with this habit over the years or family members, where if you've been sick for a long time, your first thing that people might ask is, oh, how you're feeling? You know, how's this going? Or the friends that you have just by virtue of someone that's had a chronic illness, many of your friends might be in the chronic illness community. So every time you talk to them, you're kind of maybe subconsciously not even realizing it. But every time you guys talk, are you having conversations about symptoms or what doctor's appointment you went to this week or what supplements you're trying this time around? So every time that happens, it reinforces the narrative. I'm sick. I have chronic illness. I am living my life based on symptoms. I'm pacing myself. I'm restricting myself based on symptoms. So that's why it's so important to surround yourself with other people on their healing journey. Now, this can go a couple ways too. There are great Facebook groups out there and other groups related to people that are doing brain retraining, neural retraining, and they offer support sometimes even with ideas for doing your rounds and how to work on like hearing success stories, which is super positive. But also when we're thinking about that neuro-linguistic programming and the parts of our visualizations that are future focused, what if you join groups that were focused on the life that you want to live? When I'm healed, I will be going back to, you know, running marathons, if that's something that maybe you used to do. That's just such an easy example. Maybe it's not that extreme, but like when I'm healed, I'll go back to that book club I used to like. When I'm healed, I'll be able to join my knitting club again, whatever that might be. If you join groups like that and then you're around people constantly seeing them doing those things, how much more is that going to help your visualizations every day of picturing yourself back in that moment? So you're following your favorite runner on Instagram and part of your daily rounds is as I heal, when I heal, I'm picturing what it's going to be like lining up at the start of that 5k race again. And then on Instagram, you're scrolling and instead of seeing other people with chronic illness symptoms, now you see people that are lining up at the start of their race. But maybe you're following other people in recovery. So you're following that person who's like, hey, I'm a slow runner. I had an injury. Look at me. I'm back to running. So you're modeling yourself and you're priming your brain that that is possible, that you are able to then really put yourself more in those visualizations and that mindset because other people are doing it, but it's all positivity focused. It's all future focused and goals focused. Um, Along the same lines, you might want to say, well, I used to be an artist. I really miss painting. That's something I'm going to get back to. I'm going to be able to be a painter again. Maybe we're not physically ready to like pull out the oils and the big canvas and clear a space that might feel overwhelming at our point of our journey. That's still maybe the visualization that we use. But how about in the meantime, what else can you put into your daily life or surround yourself with that's maybe in that arts 
field, but it's easier. Could you get a, um, you know, one of those coloring books or paint by numbers that you could just have a watercolor journal or you could do some knitting. You can pull something like that out and have it maybe right next to your bed or somewhere that it's accessible to you. And now every day when you have the time, you're like, no, I'm still an artist. Look, I'm doing this and this is helping me in my retraining journey so that when I'm ready, I can pull out the paints and I can pull out the easel again. So again, we're doing graduated steps, but we're always moving in the right direction. And we're acting as if we are healing because we are. Every time we do that, we're weakening the neural pathways that say that we're sick and we're strengthening the neural pathways that say we're getting better. I am now strengthening this pathway of, you know, I am a runner, but right now in recovery, my my therapy is that I maybe go on that walk around my room every day and then the next thing I know I'm walking around my house and the next thing I know maybe I get back into my routine of walking the neighborhood but with the goal in mind of every day I heal and I'm aiming for that end result I'm visualizing me back at the starting line same thing with the art example or anything that we're working on doing right so those are just easy examples to use but I wanted you to say that's the reason we're not saying oh, all your friends are negative and these support groups are so horrible. It's just that when you start to understand the psychology of healing, you realize why that keeps you stuck in the same loop. Now, I understand too, a lot of us have put so much work into understanding mystery illness. It's like we might as well have a medical degree, right? You're used to, you actually feel proud of the fact that maybe you're the one who figured out what was wrong. Doctors, you know, were, were gaslighting you and you spent hours of research and you found the right specialist, you found the diagnosis, like, wow, like amazing. That is great, right? Like good for you. You figured it out. But when we keep going down that rabbit hole, every time there's a symptom, we're on like the Apple watch looking at our heart rate or every time there's a symptom, we're researching it or asking online, what is this about? Again, it reinforces the idea of I'm sick and that's all that my life revolves around. So getting rid of the monitors, getting rid of the support groups, finding ways to say, okay, that symptom came up, but that is from the past. I, I don't worry about that anymore because I'm working on healing. I know the symptoms are there, but what am I focusing on? Let's work instead on noticing every time today that I have a sign that I'm healing. So let's work on that extra energy I had today you know, what I was able to go and walk out and do something that I needed to do. Or let's focus on the positive mindset that I had today, whereas before I would always catch myself in negative thinking patterns. So that's that's the goal. That's what we're working on. There's a lot of cars. This is usually a quiet street, but not today. Um, but I wanted to hop on here. My daughter's actually in an activity, but I really think it's important to keep this momentum going and really work on how we put the brain retraining into our everyday life. And this is the biggest part of it is get rid of the negative influences and put in the positivity. Always be in the mindset of how am I healing today? If you catch being symptoms focused or people around you being symptoms focused saying, no, I, I'm not doing that anymore. We have stopped that pattern. Now we focus on healing. What am I working towards? What are the signs today and the positives and the motivations to keep me going? And it could be so simple. It could be, I ate that new food and didn't have a reaction. You know, if we're working on that kind of sensitivity, it could be usually I wake up feeling really swamped and tired already, but today I woke up and I actually just got out of bed and I went into the kitchen and I made my tea, whatever it is. It could be small, it could be big but thinking of the positives and then visualizing. That is the biggest thing. That's maybe where I am today and I know it's leading me to this awesome, cool thing that I'm getting to. And surrounding yourself with people that help you visualize that future instead of reminding you of your past. So I hope that helped today. It's just working on our cognitions every day, a little bit at a time, working on the brain retraining, getting out of all of these past ways of thinking that keep us stuck and working on mental flexibility and emotional flexibility and putting ourselves in positions where we feel hopeful, we feel validated, we feel alive, we feel excited about where we're going. So I hope you have an awesome day full of healing and I'll talk to you guys soon.